The Ultimate Route 66 Travel Guide In this video, we'll talk about the famous Route 66. It's possibly the most popular highway in the world that has come to define interstate travel in the US and has enjoyed a great deal of exposure in Hollywood too. While it's not the oldest route in the country, there are sections with deserted gas stations and motels that can give off an eerie feeling. However, it's mostly about the long drive that covers many states, many cities, and towns, and of course, many faces of America. Route 66 stretches all the way from Chicago to Santa Monica, California. Most road trippers start this iconic road trip from Chicago. If you're not from there, you should definitely give it a few days and check out the food and art scene. It can be a long trip, so you have to plan a little in advance and keep some essentials with you for the road. That said, for some, spontaneity is the real thrill. Before I talk about my experience on the road driving this vast stretch of the highways, let's talk a little about the history of the legendary Route 66. History of Route 66 Route 66 origins go all the way back to the 19th century when state highways weren't really a thing. Three existing highways were turned into this continental route to connect Chicago with Los Angeles, but really the idea was to connect all the small towns along the way to a major thoroughfare and to major cities. It was entrepreneurs Cyrus Avery of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and John Woodruff of Springfield, Missouri, who envisioned such a plan and lobbied for it. However, it only became a reality when the National Highway Program kicked in. You're probably wondering why and how did it get the name 66? This numerical designation was assigned by the city of Springfield, Missouri. They put up a sign in the center of the city, and the number was officially assigned to the route in the summer of 1926. I guess we owe the people of Springfield, Missouri, and Avery in particular, for choosing a pretty cool number. After that, it became one of the original highways in the country, even though it wasn't properly paved all the way until the later 1930s. Route 66 was decidedly different from the other popular highways, like the Lincoln or the Dixie. For starters, it's not as linear as the other two. The curvy path passes through or near the rural populations of the Midwest, the South, and the Southwest. People in the small towns of Illinois, Missouri, Kansas, and Oklahoma got access to a major highway, which obviously opened opportunities for the economies of these places. As you take the route, you can get the sense of the boom the route must have had. Don't take me wrong, it still has thriving towns and rest stops along the way, but the abandoned stations give the impression that this route has seen its ups and downs. In the beginning, though, it was mostly an up. The start of Route 66 was particularly great for the trucking industry. In the 1930s, the trucking industry, thanks in part to the National Highway Program, was rivaling with rail network for shipping and moving goods. This translated into a boom in small business around the rest stops to cater to the needs of those truckers. What really made Route 66 popular and a symbol of the American spirit was the Great Depression. Tens of thousands of Americans took the route to move west, especially to California, in search of work and a new life. The highway itself provided opportunities to unemployed youth as it was still being paved. So many men started working on paving the highway. It was also instrumental during World War II, when the military needed to mobilize troops for training. The underpopulated and vast, with a temperate climate, served as the best place to train troops. Soldiers traveled to army bases from around the country, taking this very route. In the late 1940s, California was a thriving place, especially the Los Angeles metropolitan area. Again, it was an opportunity for Americans in the East and Midwest to find work, and they took this very road that we're driving on right now. Even at this time, most people traveling this route were poor and often unemployed. They still needed amenities, which kept the businesses along the way running. The major tourism boom didn't hit Route 66, or frankly, the whole of America, until the economic boom of the 1950s. In that decade, people had money to spend, and what did they spend money on? Cars! and cars meant they could travel out of state and explore the country. Perhaps that's why California has such a strong car culture, because people drove there from far and wide in their cars and campers. Oh, by the way, Route 66 is also called the Mother Road, thanks to the 1940s film adaptation of John Steinbeck's book, The Grape of Wrath. It was after this movie that the route got de facto the name Route 66. But enough about the history of this road. Let's talk about how it is now. The Journey on Route 66 there are lots of one-way rentals for Route 66 in Chicago, and even other places along the route. If you don't want to drive your own car or truck, or perhaps you don't have one, renting is a great option. And the cars are pretty decent too. Just make sure that you have insurance, and ideally, a full gas tank. Route 66 is 2,278 miles long today, after some stretches are no longer in use. How long it takes you to cover this route really depends on you. 
If you take your sweet time and explore the landmarks and towns along the way, the road trip could go as long as two weeks. If you're just driving like a shipping truck would from point A to point B with rest stops along the way, it could take you a week to cover. We made the whole trip in 10 days simply because that's how long we planned it to be, so there was a lot more driving than there was stopping. We did manage to see some of the popular spots along the way. These days, navigating the route isn't a biggie as you have navigation in your car and maps on your phone. However, there are still paper maps of the route you can buy from rest stops and hotels along the way and do it the old way as many travelers did back in the day. Those who work in restaurants, motels, and gas stations along the way are pretty familiar with the route. So anytime technology isn't with you, you can always ask the staff in these places. It's best to spend most of the daylight driving because you can cover most of the distance safely. Plus, you get to see all the views along the way. You'll see a noticeable difference in the landscape as you cross into the southern states, especially when you hit Texas and New Mexico. The terrain gets dry as it passes through the deserts in New Mexico and Arizona. That is why it's not ideal to take this route in the dead of summer. These particular stretches can get very hot. There's more traffic too in some places, especially when you hit the cities. If you're doing Route 66 purely as a recreational road trip, the best time to go is March through May and September through November. April and May are definitely the best months to travel this route as the days are longer, the weather is pleasant, and you can roll down the windows without feeling too hot. You won't see too many of the original Route 66 signs along the way as the designation has officially been changed ever since the interstate highway system was adopted. However, there are a few historical signs left that you can take pictures with if you want something to remember the trip by. Best Attractions Along Route 66 Okay, let's talk about what you can see along the way. Seriously, one video wouldn't be enough to cover the variety of stuff you can visit on Route 66, but I'll list my top 10 must-do and must-visit places along the famous Route 66. Number 10. I will have to say visiting Lou Mitchell's Diner in Chicago. If you're starting the journey from there, make it your first lunch or dinner spot. It's the good old American diner that has been there since 1923, as old as the route itself. Number 9. Merrimack Caverns in Stanton, Missouri are a must-see for anyone taking Route 66. The almost 5-mile long cave and cavern system are millions of years old, literally. There are guided tours every day, so take one of those and go during noon. Number 8. For those who want some pictures for Instagram, the art installation near Amarillo, Texas is the best. It's named the Cadillac Ranch because they are actual Cadillacs half buried in the ground and the other half over the ground covered with graffiti. Number 7. The murals in Pontiac are also definitely picture worthy. You'd think they are new, but some are as old as the 1800s. Yeah, it was a pretty cool experience seeing those murals celebrating the iconic American highway. Number 6. The Painted Desert in Arizona is simply amazing. If you haven't seen the Grand Canyon, or even if you have seen it, you should definitely see the colorful mountains of the Painted Desert. It's not exactly on Route 66, but just a detour. Number 5. I would have to include Ariston Cafe on this list because it's a must-do lunch stop along the way in Litchfield, Illinois. The meals are hearty and the staff friendly. Oh, and it's also as old as the route going back to 1924. Number 6. There's an actual Route 66 museum in Oklahoma with all the historical stuff about the legendary road. For history bluffs, there are so many interesting objects to see and information to learn. You can also buy some memorabilia from the shop. Number 3. Santa Monica Pier has to be among the top three spots along the way. The very Cali vibe of the pier makes the journey worth it. It's the perfect pit stop for days or even weeks long journey. Number 2. The Leaning Water Tower of Groom, Texas could rival the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It was a fully functional water tower that was repurposed to build a tourist attraction. Number 1. Santa Fe in and of itself is a great city. Surrounded by amazing landscapes, the former Spanish colony is a must-do for every Route 66 traveler. Make sure to stay there for at least a day or two. Driving Safety on Route 66 I should also talk about driving safety along the epic road trip. Most of the stretch is a highway, which means you'll be driving at speeds over 80 miles an hour. The roads aren't exactly difficult to traverse, but you should be attentive while driving as there are lots of trucks on the road as well. Don't change the lane too often, and when you do, make sure to look out for other fast-moving cars. If you're stopping somewhere, make sure that you stop safely and at the right spot. Don't stop randomly, as many parts are pretty deserted and again, very fast-moving cars and trucks on the road. Don't expect signs to keep you on the route because they have changed a lot as it has become a mix of several interstate highways. However, use a map or your phone for convenience. 
If you're driving in the group, make sure to switch after a couple of hours. If you have driver's fatigue, you won't really get to enjoy the drive. Obviously, you'd want to bring snacks and drinks for the road, but don't buy too much, as you can always buy more at truck stops and gas stations. Accommodation on Route 66 The good thing about the accommodations along Route 66 is that you can find decent hotels as well as some dirt cheap motels. We didn't have to spend more than 50 bucks a night anywhere, which means you can do this road trip on a budget as well. There are accommodations near towns and major cities. You don't have to drive a lot between them, but I found it helpful to plan our stays beforehand. That way, you can find decent places and reach them just in time to sleep for the night. If you're traveling in summer, you can book in advance too to ensure availability, although places are available almost everywhere. You'll also find vintage Route 66 motels along the way, which obviously are really fun to stay at. You get the whole road trip vibe staying at these places. There are many in Missouri in particular. It seems though, throughout history, the state has really embraced and celebrated the fact that Route 66 passes through it. Is driving Route 66 worth it? Our road trip on this amazing piece of American history was pretty smooth. With no flat tires or gas outages, we made it all the way from the Great Southwest just fine. However, things can happen, so make sure you check everything in your car before starting the journey. If your car breaks down, there are plenty of old-school mechanic garages along the way if channeling your inner vintage is your thing. Overall, Route 66 is a must-do for any adventure and road trip enthusiast. If you've lived in cities only your whole life, driving on this route will give you a whole new perspective about America. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience I'd recommend to both Americans and foreign tourists. For more travel content, be sure to follow us on Instagram via our handle, at ViaTravelers, or check out our blog at ViaTravelers.com.